Hi, again. I think we're back now. My internet went all, uh... Haywire on me. Alright, now I can't- I can't get into the stream chat. Oh, everything was working so nicely. But now it's not. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right, let me just go shut down my desktop. Okay, now, speak it in, take two. Um, yeah, it's suddenly... My phone went all, uh, haywire, and then... I got some weird error on the PS3, <laughs> and I was like, uh-oh, something broke. Alright, so we gotta go back to Toto from here. This Toto? Oh, this is the inn. Right, so that's right there. Alright, so we gotta go a little south. And then back to the bridge. Can I help you? Do you want to say hi to everybody? Oh, come say hi. Say hi to everybody. Do you have anything to say in the mic? No. No, you never do. All right, be back in a second. Got to feed him. Come on. Remember when I asked you earlier if you wanted food before I started streaming? And you said, no. All right. So now... We're back in here, and according to this guide, um, oh, there was something more we had to do. I screwed up. All right, we got new weapons too, so let's check this out.
Alright, so we have to go to the item shop. Is the end. That's a room. Weapons, and you can't go in for some reason. Uh... Ah, hold on a second. Why isn't this? to turn off now. How do I get this to turn off? Stop! <laughs> there we go. Ah, there we go. Okay, now I'm in. It wouldn't let me into the, the, the chat for some reason. Alright, we gotta find the item shop. Which is... I don't know where. That's not it. Is this it? Pay for it, we lose 500. But if you say no, Jowlery will sell his ring and get 2000. Then by the you'll still have 1500 saved. Um, okay, sure. Now we can go back. Hi, new viewers. They're gone. It keeps happening. Sarah. Yeah. 
He's a wolf that doesn't hunt in a pack. Yeah, they torched the village. This is yet another 1990s RPG with a significant amount of war crimes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they, they might have overdone the wailing a little bit. That's pretty goth. And yes, we do know Victor. Oh, the kid joins the party. Okay, so... Head back to Mercenary Fort. So, if we are by Toto... Okay, we gotta go south. I like how um, your dude starts uh, doing some stuff if he sits there for a second. I, I know I've said this on streams before, but I really like the birds flying overhead and the clouds and all. That's such a nice, you know, neat little detail.
Yeah, the idol animations are pretty cool. They look like something the character would actually do. And it's not, you know, something obnoxious. Like when I was streaming Sonic a couple weeks ago, Sonic starts tapping his foot like a real asshole after a couple seconds. And it's just like, oh, sorry Sonic, we're not all uh, as edgy and in your face as you are. Yeah, Potch, yeah, I I don't know. It's a odd name for currency. And you know, I understand I understand the uh urge to call it anything but dollars. But some of these games have some weird... Oh, this is Ryu, so... where are we? Oh, we gotta go a little more south. Yeah, see, check out the cloud going overhead. That's really cool. That's something that, I mean, it's so basic, but, like, modern games, a lot of them don't do that very well. Let's grind for a couple minutes here. Just to keep leveling up. Oh, your favorite currency is money from Kingdom Hearts. I'm still, you know, call me old-fashioned, but I'm a big rupee fan. From Zelda. I forget when we were playing Fantasy Star in the summer, I forget what it was, but I was just calling it, like, Gil all the time. Potch. Yeah, these enemies aren't gonna give us much. Yeah, rupees are awesome to pick up. Yeah, I love the noise. That was one of the things that Breath of the Wild did a really good job of, is, you know, making it feel like, you know, the old days. Back at the mercenary fort. Uh, once you reach the fort, head up to the top floor and report to Victor. Okay. I only printed five pages of this guide and we're already on page four. There are so many games in this era that have, like, really sexist comments like that that are supposed to just be, like, I guess, like, witty banter. And it's just not holding up very well. You wrote down all the walkthroughs so you didn't waste any printer ink. Nice. Yeah, 
now I'm I've been trying to only print a couple pages at a time, but the way um the way this guide is set up you end up with only a couple of pages you're already kind of running through it which is annoying And the guide's so big, it's like 400 pages. So it's hard to edit, even. Because it kind of locks up. Because it's so big. People that dedicate that much time to write a 400 page walk through the unsung heroes of the world. Yeah, I agree. I started doing one for um, Final Fantasy, the first game, in. Oh gosh. It might have still been the 90s, even. Uh, and I got, I don't know, like five or six pages in before I, you know, I kind of got busy doing the other stuff. And I never quite went back to it. But I've always wanted to do a guide like that, especially for an older game. I wouldn't even want to attempt that with a newer game. You know, something that's really, really complex, like Breath of the Wild or like a Horizon Zero Dawn kind of game. No way. But then again, these days, you know, because of YouTube and stuff like that, you know, you can just look up video. And you don't really have to worry so much about that. Is there anything I can do here? Okay. All right, we gotta head to the top floor, which is, oh, oh, the top floor as in the Top floor, right. <sighs> Ew. Even the, you know, the video Let's Plays and stuff like that, I mean, that's just the attention detail that people do. 
in those is um, really impressive. Oh, here we go. Or like I did the Mega Man 11 video yesterday, and there's already people who've done like no no uh, damage, um, you know, speed runs and stuff like that of that boss level. Yeah, I'm always so impressed by that. Like speed runners. I was watching someone, um, one of the speed gaming channels was doing Castlevania 4 last night. And that's a game that I never really thought about as a speedrunning game, but they were finding ways to exploit it. Which was interesting. You know, stuff that I just, like, never, uh, really thought about. Yeah, you can speedrun anything if you just believe. Yeah, that's... So I found. I still, um... That Dragon Warrior speedrun I watched a couple weeks ago. Where someone goes through that game in, like... It was, like, 25 minutes or something like that. Where they, they exploit the world map to avoid battles so they're like step step stop step stop like stuff like that to like time when they um get attacked and i mean it's just it was just so cool to watch someone just like totally control a game Hey, new viewers, just so a couple people came in. So we're going to we're going to Ryub. So let me look at my map. Oh, it's oh the oh the one right up top. Okay. I still think it's really cool that everyone attacks at the same time. Roughly. <laughs> it's Ryub. Sega Sports Talk Football. Hey, man. You just Googled the world re record for 100% of Breath of the Wild. was 27 hours. Yeah, I bet. Um, 
man, I put I put like 300 hours into that game, and I bet I haven't done 30% of it. Just those 900 Korok seeds on their own is um, difficult enough to get. All right, so. Uh, once you arrive in Raya Village, head to the forest. Okay. Uh, Breath of the Wild seems really wild. How many seeds did you get? So, I got, um... Probably about a hundred. I wasn't really super active uh, looking for them, though. <laughs> so, all right, we're, we're at the fork. The first fork go to the left. I just grab them like if I saw something that looked like it was obviously hiding a seed. I kind of go over to it. Yeah, Breath of the Wild's a game that you can, like, really seriously explore if you really want to. Um, and, yeah, 100% it. Hold on, let me look at this. And then just follow the path until you reach the house. Okay. Or you can just kind of wander around and... You know, that's kind of how I played the game. I mean, I beat it, but... I would just kind of go for a walk every day while playing it and have fun. And every so often be like, oh, let me go, you know, do something it's more specific. You know, go defeat a divine beast or something. Yeah, that first person that found all the seeds, I mean, that's, I mean, that's really impressive. Um, you know, I'd probably never do that. So that's really cool that people do stuff like that. That they just kind of pick something to do like that and just stick with it. Or just kind of have that natural inclination to do things like that. See, my inclination in open world games is always to just kind of go wander around. And that was pretty much how I played Breath of the Wild. I was so much more concerned about exploring the map and kind of figuring out where uh, different stuff was. Than, you know, advancing until much later. When I finally was kind of like, oh yeah, I probably should.
Uh, for the completest finished game, totally. Wonder how that ties into personality types. Yeah, totally. I agree. Yeah, my whole thing with open world games is always to explore them more. And especially, I mean, Breath of the Wild is just the perfect game to just kind of boot up and look at a spot a couple miles away on the map and go, hey, uh, why don't I go go there? And um, eventually get there. All right, so let's um, pause for a second because we've been playing for a bit. Um, so uh, just the station ID here, uh, here at uh, at Draft Hills Pod. Um, you know, I do a retro gaming podcast, uh, DraftHills.net. Uh, we have 40-something or another episodes out. Uh, a new episode on Mega Man 6 will be coming out in a few days, uh, probably on the weekend. Um, you know, Dryfields Pod is the place to follow on oh, a whole bunch of different places. Twitch and Twitter, Patreon, etc. Uh, we also have an Extra Life uh, page. Uh, bit.ly slash WPW Extra Life will take you there. Um, I'll be uh, streaming on uh, November 3rd for um, uh, Children's Hospital Philadelphia. Uh, we're hoping to raise some money for that. Um... And uh, our regular schedule is uh, Monday nights is RPG night where uh, we're currently playing Suikoden 2. And uh, Wednesday is retro game night. Uh, right now we're uh, this week we'll be playing uh, Ninja Gaiden. Uh, and uh, next week will be Super Ghouls and Ghosts. So uh, good times to be had by all. Um, probably going to be on tomorrow earlier in the night. Uh, to play around with the new uh, Switch Online retro game stuff. Uh, and then t on Tuesday and on Thursdays, uh, please uh, make sure that you stick around for a uh, username Super Sarah in the chat uh, for her streams. She streams on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And then I'm on sometimes on the weekend, sometimes on Fridays. It just kind of depends. Yesterday I was on a lot, like what was that? Three or four different streams? So that's your station ID. We only lost one viewer. Alright, we gotta get back to town. We haven't saved in a while. I'm just realizing. So, alright, so we get him. Uh, and then we gotta go back to the village. Oh, jeez, more people are about to get burned. You know, this game's really into, um... Burning villages down. But yeah, let's make sure we save. Do you want to save your data? Save completed. Wait, did I save? Yeah, welcome to my life for the last 30 years. Saving 19 times because I can't remember 20 seconds ago because I have no attention span. I did that with um, Dragon's Dogma last night after I ended the stream. I saved again because I was like, wait, did I save? And then I almost literally, like, 
loaded the video to see if I'd saved, and then I was like, no, no, that's, like, horrible <laughs> if I have to resort to that. So why don't I just resave it, and then it's fine. Oh, whoa. FMV cutscene. Oh, Aza just started hosting. Thank you, Aza, as always. Whoa, PS1 uh, FMVs. I love it. Do you really want to live that much? Yes. <laughs> Is that right? In that case, act like a pig. He's gonna still kill her, isn't he? I can't wait till we, uh, we Bahamut, whatever the game, whatever the version of this game, uh, Bahamut the fuck out of this asshole. My sword thirsts for blood. That's not a phallic metaphor, no sir. Alright, we gotta find somewhere to save, because we haven't saved in a while, and all these people are gone, so there's no inn. Uh, crap. So, where can I go real quick? I can go up to Toto. Alright, hold on. 
it kind of sucks that you, can all, you can't save everywhere. Fight. Fight, 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 fight. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Oh, this is Toto. Yeah, I love in-game, like, save points, too, uh, Sarah. I definitely do also. Oh, we just gained a party member. And there's a doggy. Hello, sir. Yeah, I think Final Fantasy style, uh, so where do we end up? We gotta go back over. To find somewhere. Or we can save. Oh, we can go to that inn, too. Yeah, Final Fantasy style saves are definitely my favorite. Um, so, I've been starting to get into Octopath Traveler, uh, is a game that has a lot of those. And a lot. Um, they're everywhere. On basically every screen on the map, as you're kind of traversing through the game, there's a save point, which is cool. And that game's great. I'm only, I don't know, three or four hours in, but I'm really liking it. Alright, where is the town? So that's the... Okay, so we gotta go downward. And then Muse Cities. We're level up up enough where we're just like creaming everything though where is it what the hell can't find the other town. I'm not even sure where I am.
At least you can just kind of run away from battles, though. That's good. All right, so that's me. That's a uh, muse. So if you go back this way, you should run into the inn. Except I'm not. Okay, Sarah, have a good night. Okay, so what is this here? This is the North Sparrow Pass. That's not even on my map. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, okay, I see where I am. I know where I am now. Okay. So we gotta go back across. We gotta go back over the bridge. To get to somewhere to save. Yeah, I fully plan on saving like 80 times here in a second. Yeah, okay, so we're on the other side, so now... Wait. This is Toto. So now we get we can get the White Deer in. Alright, so it's right up here. I think. Maybe. There it is. Oh, there's a kitty. And then Mew City is right here. Oh, come on! How the hell am I supposed to save? Shit! Can you save here? Ah! There we go. Finally. Hey, coolest dude here. Yeah, <laughs> we were just running around for a while, um, trying to find a safe spot because we were going to, um, oh, we were going to the mercenary fort. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me read this. Okay. Um... Yeah, because all the other villages, geez, all the other villages have been burned down, so there's nowhere else to save. Oh, man. That sucks. So, um, okay, 10.23. I think we're going to wrap up uh, for tonight. Uh, usually I play till about 10.30, so uh, we got started slightly late because we played for like five minutes, and then uh, it wasn't the power went out, but the internet went out, so we had to wait for that to reboot. So, um, 
excellent stream. A lot of new people in the chat. Thank you, uh, coolest dude here, and um, uh, uh, Sega Sport Sega Sports Talk fan, and a couple other people. Um, you know, some new viewers uh, showing up. So. Um, we'll be back with uh, Sweek It In next Monday. Uh, I'll try to play some during the week. Um, uh, Wednesday night, we'll be back with uh, Ninja Gaiden. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll probably be on sometime during the evening uh, to play um, the new Nintendo Switch online stuff. We'll just kind of mess around with that for a while. And uh, should be fun. And then Sarah will stream later on. Uh, I'm not sure what she's going to stream, but um, I, I may be around later in the week. New podcast out uh, this weekend on Mega Man 6. And um, cool. That's going to wrap up for tonight. Thanks, everybody, for stopping by and talk soon.